Well, hello and welcome. I'm Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations. Guess what we're doing today? We're gonna to be working on this frame. Now, this, you know, people always ask where I get things. So I, I do a lot of auctions, a lot of estate sales, um, and I get a lot of drop-offs. I get a lot of people that are clearing out houses for their parents and they, they just drop things off. Send a picture, gee, could you use this? This was a dumpster find. So my nephew, bless his heart, was driving with his mom and he saw this leaning up against a dumpster and he goes, mom, bum, there's a huge big frame. I think it's Cindy would love it. They stopped, they got it out of the dumpster and bless their hearts. So this baby, I haven't even measured it. So this baby is, I'm gonna need glasses for this is 40 inches, 40 and a half by 32 and a half. It's big, it's big and it's beautiful and it's broken. <laughs> it has this one little curlicue that's missing. So the first thing that I did was I took a brush and I brushed this all down I took wet cloths and I wiped it all down and we're talking a lot of wet cloths um, that it took a lot of a lot of dirt on this the rest um, it looks kind of dirty but it's it's not dirt it's aging meaning like it was designed to look really old like that we are going to we are going to fix it and we're gonna fancy it up now this is a big huge mirror frame not a mirror um and i'm gonna do it up as a frame and i'm gonna sell it just as a frame because i think that this becomes a decor piece in itself you hang this on the wall and you put like a big wreath in it or you put some wall sconces in it you put another painting inside it just hanging in there you switch out the decor inside it this just becomes a frame on the wall to frame something else so it's big, we are not gonna hide its bigness, we are going to embrace its bigness, which means we're going bold. Um, which also means I'm not doing right. I often do these big, not, the, not this big, but I often sell like big frames, fancy frames, painted white for people to use as I described this one. Um, but not this one. Now. What I do have is IOD air dried clay. And sometimes on these, like when I'm missing a whole corner, I will have to create a mold of that corner. But this is just a little curlicue that really, I think I can imitate fairly well with the clay um, that once we do everything we're gonna do to it, nobody can tell. So in this case, doing a mold I think is overkill. The one thing that I am going to need that I forgot to bring over is my wood glue to be able to attach it on here. But all I'm doing to begin with is just kind of using the existing one as a bit of an idea about whether or not I've got the right amount of clay. And that looks pretty darn good. I just need it to be thicker. Okay, so. I am going to just kind of roll this out. So I want it to be smooth. Make it into a solid ball before I start rolling. There we go. Rounding up the tip. And I'm just kind of pushing it down in to create the width that I need. Because then that's going to fit in there just right. And I'm just going to kind of roll it to create that shape. Awesome. So I'm just gonna go get my wood glue now so I can get it 
glued down into place before I start adding some of the details that I'm going to need. But it's looking pretty good already. And once it's all painted out, nobody's going to know. Okay, so I'm using Type Bond 3, Type Bond 3, the ultimate wood glue. I've just had great success with Type Bond, but you can certainly use um, your favorite wood glue, whatever you prefer or that works well for you. And I'm just kind of smoothing out the sides a little bit. And then now there's a, a ridge that flows up through here and I'm just using the rounded end of a paintbrush to be able to get that indentation happening and it's just that little detail more than anything else that when this is painted up will just make it seem more real. Nothing on the back. I was just feeling the other one to see. It's just smooth and perfect. So before I can start painting, I need this to dry. My repair has all dried in place. It's pretty darn firm and cemented. So we get to start painting. I am going to paint this entire frame two coats of Little Black Dress by DIY. So this is a, a deep, this is a lovely black. So we're going completely black on it before we start, uh, well, adding a little embellishment to our black dress. So until we start kind of gilding the lily here. So the only thing that you want to make sure of is that, you know, there's so many fine details in this that you want to make sure that you've got a brush that is able to, you know, flex into all of those grooves. You don't want it to be so stiff that you're only brushing over the top surface. That would be a perfect brush if we were doing dry brushing, but for this, we want a brush that we're gonna be able to work it down into all those little crevices and you know the little loops and the whirls. So I will paint the top of this and then um, you know I'll start kind of working around the outside rims as well and getting all of that done as well. But Okay, one coat coverage is looking awesome, but I wanna wait and see when it dries. Likely it's gonna be two coats or at least one in a touch-up coat. And then when it's all dry, I'll be back at you for the next part, the fun part. Well, I've got the big mama jamma all painted out and I did need to take like a smaller brush to be able to go in and get into all the creases around it because we are going to do some gold leafing. And it's not gonna cover all of that. I'm not looking at gold leafing the entire thing. I am looking at doing kind of a rough leafing around all of the details. I don't know about this section. We'll see once I do the upper, see how much more, how much more. <laughs> but here's the thing. Um, for those of you that have not done gold leafing before, you will need to purchase some gold leaf. Um, 
And it comes in packages like this that have sheets of paper in between all of the little pages of gold leaf. It is a hot day today. It is brutally hot, but I've had to turn it. And my, my back shop here is cooled by overhead fans and I've had to turn them off because this stuff will blow away <laughs> like crazy. It'll just float all over. It is very thin, it is very delicate. If you have like oils on your hands, it's gonna stick to your hands. If you start getting some of the glue onto your hands, it's gonna stick all over. So what you're gonna need is, um, if you have some gold size, now I bought this years ago, thinking it was a small container. It's a huge container. <laughs> so I'm using gold size because I got it. Um, if you don't have this, then I will, I will say, because look at, I, that's more than I need, right? So it goes very far. But if you don't have this, take some white PVA glue and dilute it until you get this watery consistency. It will work too. So. Um, I would have done that had I known that at the time. Everybody just kept saying, oh, gold sizing, gold sizing. It even looks like watered down PVA glue. It smells like watered down PVA glue. Um, it's a fancy way to get you to spend more money. If you were using real gold leaf, okay, fine. I would buy the sizing because maybe there's something different about it. But this is fake gold leaf. I'm not using real gold leaf, but it works the same, right? It has the same properties. And nobody's gonna pay for this frame if I had it covered in real 24 karat gold. Sistine Chapel, real gold leaf. Here, no, not so much. But in essence, what you wanna do, and I have a way earlier video where I actually put the sizing onto stamps and stamped it on furniture and then did the gold leaf over top of that. But I'm just taking a really small paintbrush and I am just going to paint my sizing on. And this is on, I haven't bothered to seal my paint. So this is unsealed paint because once this is all done, I'm gonna have to be sealing all of the gold leaf in anyway. And I really didn't need this to be done on a sealed surface, so why bother? I also didn't distress this because I wanted just the contrast of the gold and the black without, um, you know, without any of the other distressing and that kind of stuff going on. So you want to get this painted on not an exorbitant amount, and I'm just looking at doing it kind of roughly on the top. And you don't put it on soaking wet, but you also don't wait for it to be dry. You want it tacky. So you can see I'm working with some narrow spaces, and I can, I can add gold leaf after, you know, once I've attached some on, so you're kind of working in small spaces, right? I find it easiest to leave it on that backing paper and then use it to kind of manipulate it. As soon as I take my finger on there, I'm gonna get sizing onto it. I'll get some of the glue onto my finger and then I will start having gold leaf sticking all over me. And here's where I do use my fingers. I pull some of the excess away where it's just floating off in space and sections that I miss, I will add it on. Okay, and now I just kind of use this paper to kind of burnish it on a little bit and I let that dry. So while that's drying, I'll maybe go over to another section and do the same. And I just keep kind of painting my glue on where I want the gold leaf to stick. A 
doesn't look like much yet. Just wait till we pull it off. Okay. And then I add another piece. And this is a little bigger than I need. I mean, you can tear it apart and do all that, but I gotta tell you, this stuff starts going everywhere. And, if, and, and when we get to the next step of the gold leaf, boy, you end up with little gold flecks all over your house. So, you know, keep, keep, a, keep a vacuum handy. Oh my goodness, this heat is already crazy. This is very muggy in here. And if I don't have a place that needs it yet, I will pull off some of those excess pieces now while they're still flat and readily usable. Just because I will have little places that need them later. I just wanna have my leaf go as far as possible. Now this side is pretty dry, so I come back and I just really burnish it all in with that paper again. There's a big piece I can save. And you can see my fingers are already getting gold. <laughs> all right. And then you wanna take a soft brush. So this is a brand new chip brush. It's got the long bristles, it's pretty soft. Um, and then you're gonna start brushing your excess leaf away. This is where you get all those little flecks going all over your home. <laughs> So anywhere that it hasn't been burnished into the glue, that it hasn't adhered to the glue, all of that gold leaf will come off. And you can see certainly against the black, and this is where, this is why I went with black. The gold really likes to be over a dark color. Same with copper, that sort of thing, because wherever it's uneven, that's the color that's gonna show through. And that contrast is just awesome. Right? And this is where if I was doing 24 karat gold, I would be having a heart attack by all these little tiny pieces <laughs> that were going elsewhere. So that's where you would maybe be making an effort to catch it in your skirt <laughs> and, and putting it into another little container and uh, Because of the antique nature of this frame too, I quite like the fact that, you know, we're getting it uneven. You can layer it over top to make sure that you get it um, perfectly, but I, I like the look of it being a little bit irregular relative to the piece. And that's how it goes. Look how awesome that already is. So I'm going to carry on. I'll pull you in for um, a bit of a closer look at what I'm doing. And, uh, a part, you know, otherwise it's just, it's just more and more of the same and really outlining and defining our patterns here. Okay, I'm excited. I think this is gonna look super cool. All right, cool.
Okay, so it has been about two hours. So it took me about two hours to do all of the gold around these edges. Um, this, by the way, is the repaired little curlicue. So I wanted to highlight that so that you saw, um, really, you can't tell. It doesn't look like it was ever broken. So I ended up with a dust pan full of all the little bits off the table and the floor. And I think I'll probably still be sweeping up some bits from the floor for ages. I had debated, now I know that you guys can't see the whole mirror, but it's got three, six, eight of all these embellishments around it. I had debated whether I was going to do kind of this raised panel in a gold leaf as well. You could, um, but two reasons I'm not. One, I think it might be a little too much bling. It might be a little overkill. And secondly, I am not convinced, well, I wouldn't be able to get really straight lines because it's all um, raised and got patterns. And I think as much as these look okay with not having perfect edging and being modeled, I don't think of having something that is definitely a straight line, doing that would look good. So I'm going to seal it without that. I can add it later if I change my mind. So that's okay. I am going to take it outside though and I am going to spray it with just an, you know, just a, a normal poly um, acrylic. And I'm doing that just because I don't want to be brushing off any pieces. I mean, I've brushed this a bunch of times to get everything that's loose off of it, but I don't want to be taking a brush to it again and brushing um, the poly against it. So I'm going to do a couple of coats of the spray. And then if I decide that I want to brush on um, an additional coat of poly, it would be fine because the, the spray is going to hold the gold leaf in place. So, I would recommend doing always at least a light coat of a spray poly before you do any kind of other sealing. You could wax it after you've done that if you wanted the finish of a wax, whatever, but it's just to hold this in place and make sure that you're not getting any loose bits starting to migrate all over. And then this is done. So I hope that if you haven't done gold leaf, that this gave you some ideas of what to do. A lot of times you're just using them, the flat sheets, and it's not as picky or as fiddly as this. <laughs> but it looks super cool, so it was okay. <laughs> and what else do you do on a Sunday, right? That's my normal Sunday. Let me know what you think of this one, guys. Certainly love to hear from you as always, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. I will post a link um, to some of the places that I've gotten the gold leaf from on Amazon. So if you're looking to search, then you can get that. I bought packs that come with gold, copper, and silver leaf, just because I like having a variety in case. Um, and they were a lot less expensive than buying them from, you know, like, like a Michael store, like a craft store. So I was able to buy them. That pack that I had had a hundred sheets and I didn't use nearly I, I, well, maybe, I don't know, 20 sheets, maybe, tops. So I still have left, lots left for future projects, and, uh, and, and I've used it for lots of others. So I'll post some links in case you need to look for it. Um, and otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care.